The Gulf Coast has changed a lot since the first French and Spanish explorers arrived. What a strange new world they must have found. Every trip ashore likely brought them face to face with unfamiliar animals and birds. Over time, we explored our new home, and by now we've probably discovered and identified all of the large animals and birds that inhabit the region. The same can probably be said for the entire country. Today, we live in a very different place. While the location is the same, we've profoundly developed and changed the landscape. We know what wildlife lives here and where it occurs. I suppose there might still be a chupacabra somewhere out there. <laughs> But I think we're just letting mangy coyotes run away with our imaginations. A child growing up in the United States might understandably believe that there are no more undiscovered creatures out there, and that our days of exploration and discovery are over. But the truth is, we still live close to a vast, unexplored wilderness, a place we've barely begun to survey, a place that contains animals that are as alien to us as ocelots and alligators were to the early explorers. I'm talking about the deep sea the largest unexplored habitat on Earth, a place that plays a major role in regulating our climate, storing excess carbon dioxide, and is home to creatures that may contain compounds with the power to cure our most frightening diseases. Why is it unexplored? Why is it still a mystery? Why is it that a place only a few hundred miles away from the densely populated Gulf Coast should remain such an enigma? The reality is, it's too deep for divers to explore. In the Gulf of Mexico, we're talking about water that can be four kilometers deep. To put that in perspective, One World Trade Center in New York City is about 550 meters tall. It's the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere. The depth of the Gulf of Mexico is over seven times the height of One World Trade Center. In addition to its extreme depth, It's also too cold, too dark, and too remote. To explore it, scientists need specialized、uh, submarines, like the Alvin, operated by the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. But there are simply too few manned research submarines in the world. Another option are remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs, but these are also in short supply. In North America alone, There are only about a dozen research ROVs capable of working to 1,000 meters. And when you can get time on one of these systems, it's only enough for a brief glimpse into the depths. But scientists are small fry in the global ROV market. The oil and gas industry has developed technology to extract petroleum from the bottom of the deep sea. And to do this, they need ROVs to be their eyes and hands. When they're not busy supporting drilling, these large, capable, and expensive systems are frequently idle. During these periods of time, they're potentially available for science. Industry has the ROVs. Scientists have a need to explore the depths. Is there a way we can collaborate? The Serpent Project is a global partnership between the oil and gas industry and academia. It provides scientists with access to deep water vessels and ROVs at locations around the world. Here in the Gulf of Mexico, Gulf Serpent is a collaboration between Louisiana State University, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, which is an agency of the federal government, and the oil and gas industry. Deep water drilling rigs aren't really the usual place you find scientists, but boarding a helicopter, trading a lab coat for a hard hat, safety glasses, steel toed boots, and gloves. It's a great way to become an explorer. So I'm going to ask you to use your imaginations for a moment. Today, we're not in the Union Theater. We're in a helicopter flying over the Gulf of Mexico to a deep water drilling rig located about 260 miles south of here. Now let's imagine we're going to deploy an industrial ROV from that rig. But today's dive is different. We're not going to inspect the well or perform subsea work. Today's dive is a Gulf Serpent mission to explore life in the deep sea. One of the first videos I ever got still amazes me. Many animals in the deep sea have elastic jaws and stomachs. Food can be hard to find, and you never know when your next meal might be bigger than you are. This is just such an animal. It's called a gulper eel. 
Apparently, when they feel threatened, they can swallow water to make themselves appear bigger. And what we see as it deflates itself is basically its feeding behavior in reverse. The old saying that your eyes are bigger than your stomach, it doesn't apply to these guys. <laughs> Now, I think unless you're into competitive eating, it's kind of hard to relate to that gulp reel. <laughs> But some deep sea animals display behavior that's more familiar. I'm sure there are a lot of anglers in the audience. This squid is called Grimaldi toothus bonplandi. It uses its tentacle like a fishing lure. Watch as it casts out a paddle-like structure at the end of its tentacle that it wiggles to mimic a small fish or invertebrate. This behavior was unknown in squids until colleagues at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute and I collaborated and described it. Now those two animals are quite small, but Gulf serpent has also found giants. How could a jellyfish? With arms 20 feet long and a bell three to four feet in diameter, have lived in the Gulf of Mexico without us knowing about it. Meet Stygio medusa gigantea. So far, we've encountered it about a dozen times, often in the company of a strange fish that only inhabits Stygio medusa's bell. We didn't know it was there because we didn't have the ability to look for it until we partnered with industry through Serpent. That's not the only giant. Oarfish are the longest bony fishes in the world, reaching lengths of up to 26 feet. They're usually only encountered when dead or dying individuals wash up on beaches. Healthy oarfish have seldom been observed anywhere, never in the Gulf of Mexico, until serpent. So far, we've encountered five of them, all healthy, and one as deep as almost 500 meters. Now, this guy isn't a 26-footer; it's only about eight feet long. But this video. Is providing scientists and engineers who study biomechanics with valuable insights into how fish can use undulations of their dorsal fins as linear propellers. This might lead to a new generation of thrusters for future ROVs. I'm fascinated by what we're finding down there. Almost every dive results in something unexpected or interesting. Sometimes we encounter fellow explorers, like these sperm whales, that hunt in the depths for squids and octopuses. Although we used to hunt sperm whales, and we've studied them for hundreds of years, we still have lots to learn about their behavior in the depths. There's really an amazing world down there. I wish I could take every child out to the deep sea to experience the wonder and excitement of exploration and discovery. I know it sounds crazy. Can you imagine the lawyers going over the field trip permission forms? <laughs> But maybe there is a way to bring the deep sea into the classroom. For years, the lack of depth perception in conventional video has made it difficult for ROV pilots to judge just how far away they were from the objects they had to interact with. The solution was 3D TV. Oceaneering are now equipping some of their ROVs with 3D cameras, and when they aim those cameras at deep sea animals, the video they capture is spectacular. It really seems to inspire the children who see it to want to learn more about the deep sea. There's one more idea I want to leave you to think about. So far, we've only worked with a handful of the hundreds of deepwater vessels operating in the Gulf. What if we could collect data from all of them? What if we could use this network to build the largest deep sea observing system in the world? Then we could truly begin to unlock some of the mysteries of the deep. It isn't going to be easy. There are some big challenges ahead. The price of oil is dropping. I know it feels good at the pump, but it also means That each month there are fewer and fewer rigs and ROVs operating in the Gulf. Deep sea exploration could be one of the casualties. Despite this, I remain optimistic because this is an amazing partnership that's yielding incredible data. You know, when I started this project, I wanted to work with the oil and gas industry to leverage their ROVs for science. Now I'm using those ROVs to bring the deep sea into the classroom, to share its amazing organisms with children. With students and with yourselves, there really is a vast, unexplored wilderness down there, and I hope that some of the people who view these videos will be inspired to continue this voyage of exploration and discovery. Thank you.